the Street Fighter 6 closed beta review for the PlayStation 4, PlayStation 5, Xbox Series X, NS, and PC for a game that is scheduled to be released on June 2nd, 2023. For the PlayStation 4, PlayStation 5, Xbox Series X, NS, Arcade, and PC. Now, unfortunately, I was unable to get into the first closed beta, so I'm so happy that I was able to get a code for Street Fighter 6's closed beta number two. And right off the bat, the first thing you have to talk about is what you're introduced to. is this bombastic introduction that leads way to the character customization or the character avatar customization that allows for you to create some of the wildest looking characters if your imagination sees fit or somebody that looks somewhat like you. And that character will be attached to the world tour mode, not the version that you create, of course, in the beta, but when the full game does release. Unfortunately, we don't get a taste of what is to come with world tour mode in this beta. This is focusing solely on the online capabilities and to a certain extent learning how to play the game, both offline and online, via the training mode that is associated with the arcade cabinets that are located in the battle hub as long as you're not playing against another player. And that's one of the more interesting aspects when it comes to the online presentation, the online activity that is similar to what Arc System Works have done in the past with various arcade cabinets littering the scene as you're able to go in and if you're able to sit down in a cabinet that is occupied you can call forth a fight or sit down and wait and play in training mode to get ready for an upcoming opponent if a character's avatar decides to sit down at your arcade cabinet. Now, one of the things that you do not notice initially, they don't explain it to you, and it's something that you have to learn, is that by choosing, in the case of the PlayStation version, using the square button to pull up the menu that allows for you to actually initiate the casual and ranked option. So you'll be put into a queue that allows for you to get a casual match or a ranked match or one or the other if you have both actually active at the same time. You also can change whatever character you're going to utilize in those fights in that same menu. Once again, that is something that is not necessarily explained. And something that I noticed people in the chat were actually trying to figure out how to change their character, how to get into ranked mode, how to get into casual matches, instead of just using the arcade cabinets to do battle hub fights. There are also tournaments and extreme battles that, depending on how many people are playing, you may not have a chance to really get into those. Or in the case of tournaments, depending on what time the tournament starts, you may or may not be able to get into those as well. It's not like, say, Tekken, where you can have a separate mode for specifically tournament fights, where you can gather a bunch of people at the same time and have a mini tournament. These are organized and administered by Capcom themselves at a specific time. Now one thing the game also doesn't explain to you, which is very detrimental, especially if you're jumping right into an online fight, is that initially the default setting is for modern control style. And the modern control style focuses on acclimating all of the strikes into single buttons instead of having light, medium, heavy across multiple buttons. You can have them across two or one button. And then the special attack button is specifically made to do special maneuvers alongside the directional pad. So as I did, jumping in straight and not knowing that modern controls were a thing in this game, I got my butt handed to me because I did not know what in the world was going on. I played with Ken and it made no sense. Went to the options and figured out, oh, there's a classic control scheme. So switching to classic controls, mind you, you have to switch to classic controls with each character in that sub menu I was talking about earlier when you want to activate the ranked or casual searches. Because if you do not change the setting from modern to classic on every character, if you pick a character, they will automatically be set to modern. So you may be trying to jump into a fight with, say, Ryu, and he plays nothing like you experienced in the past because it's set to modern controls. For me personally, modern controls did not feel good, it did not feel fun. I know this is more for casuals or new players to the genre or Street Fighter as a whole. So I'm not going to hold this against them that much. I just wish they would have explained it a little bit better or told players that, hey, there's a classic control setting. Change it if you want to before you get into a fight, because if you don't, you probably will lose terribly. Now, with all of that out of the way, it must be stated that Street Fighter 6 in this form, at least in the beta, has been one of the most fun experiences I've had playing a fighting game in a long time. And one of the biggest reasons for that is the implementation of the drive gauge. Usually under the health bar is the stun meter or the block meter. 
Instead, now it's the drive gauge. And depending on what you do with that drive gauge, depending on what buttons you hit, depending on what segments you want to utilize, the drive gauge goes up, down, replenishes, diminishes if you're blocking or getting hit, and allows you to pull off some stunning tactical maneuvers, including a drive rush where you're enveloped in this green aura and able to rush forward without a care in the world to potentially open up a combo on a character that's trying to shoot projectiles across the screen. Of course, one of the biggest implementations when it comes to the drive gauge and the thing that really is going to make or break a lot of gamers is the drive impact. Depending on how the opponent is reacting to it, say if they're wide open, they'll be hit with a full impact drive impact attack. But if they're blocking, they'll be pushed back. If you are able to knock them back far enough, you'll be able to knock them into the wall for a bounce back that potentially could lead to another combo. There's also a parry system that is attached to the drive gauge. So there are quite a few options when it comes to utilizing the drive gauge, but it's not a end all be all method. For example, the drive impact, as I noted, may be a make or break system for a lot of gamers, but it isn't invincible. You do gain an armor that can be broken if you hit enough times by an opponent. As I said, it can be blocked and it may push you back a little bit, but you can recover very quickly. When it comes to parrying, especially if you do the parry right before you're about to be hit, it will slow down time, but if you do not react fast enough, the player can also take advantage of the fact that you didn't react fast enough. So you can land a parry and not be able to take advantage of it because the player was still quicker than you. A lot of these tools and a lot of these methods can be used against the player trying to actually activate them, which makes it a tool that must be utilized not haphazardly, which I thoroughly enjoy because it adds a deep level of strategy to an already deep system. Via this beta, we are able to play with eight characters. We were able to play with Ryu, Ken, Chun-Li, Jury, Guile, Luke, and newcomers Kimberly and Jamie. Now, a majority of the characters do play like their old counterparts, but they do have some different combo options, some new methods to their madness, especially Ken. Kimberly has to be one of the more complicated characters that I noticed picking up and playing with. Her control scheme feels a little odd if you're playing with classic controls, but she is very fast. She doesn't have a lot of power, but she is very, very agile. And her ability to utilize spray cans as explosives for projectiles is very good. Her ability to get in with certain special attacks is unique and definitely makes her an unpredictable character in the right hands. And the same can be said about Jamie, who is this drunken kung fu master that you can utilize at least four swigs to empower him with his drink if you're able to do so. But it's a strategic maneuver that must be utilized when you have an opportunity because if you do it too close to an opponent, they can stop you from drinking. But if you're able to get all four drinks, you can power up to Jamie's maximum level. He's a very fun, unique character who has a very capoeira style associated to him as well. But like Kimberly, I think he takes a little bit to get used to. He's not an easy to pick up and play character. For me personally, I found Luke and of course Ryu and shockingly enough, Chun-Li is my favorite character to play as. I've never been a big Chun-Li player. And coming into this one, I gravitated toward her more than any other character on the roster thus far. From a technical aspect, I did have some disconnects, some lobby disconnects, some laggy fights that are not out of the ordinary when it comes to not only betas, but online fighters. I think a lot of Wi-Fi players suffered when it came to this game. I was playing wired, but I could tell the difference when I was playing with a Wi-Fi player because the tendency for the lag to kick in at any moment happened. Though the game does give you an option of playing with players depending on their connectivity quality so you can turn down a player if you feel like their connectivity will be a lot lower than it should be. But then I found players that had two bars and it actually was buttery smooth and then I would have someone with a four bar connection and then by the time the fight started it would go down to two then go back up to four then go back to one so... It's one of those things that it can be a crapshoot at any given point, but a majority of the time I enjoyed what I was playing from a technical aspect. I didn't have any major issues, just a couple of lost fights here and there. Overall, I coming into this one not having been the biggest fan of Street Fighter V when it first came out and not putting that much time into Street Fighter IV, will say that this Street Fighter has me so excited for what this game has to offer from mostly a gameplay aspect. I had so much fun playing this beta. 
I am looking forward to hopefully maybe getting another one before June drops, but if it doesn't, June can't come fast enough when it comes to playing Street Fighter VI. I wish all of you could have gotten in. Hopefully there'll be an open beta. That's what I'm hoping. There's an open beta so all of you can experience this. So you can get the same feeling that I did playing this closed beta that, once again, really sold me on the quality and really the excitement of what is to come when it comes to Street Fighter VI when it does release. I'm so excited after playing this beta and I cannot wait for June. Thank <laughs> you. 